All right. It is Thursday night, January. I don't, I still, it's hard for me to say 2022, but um, today is the 13th. We'll be looking back at what happened on the 11th for the city council meeting. There is no upcoming city council meeting on the 18th due to the MLK holiday. So um, this might be a short meeting, although I feel like we always say that it never is, but uh, mm -hmm. First things first, no such thing as a silly question. We're all here learning together. So hop in at any time um, and we will just jump right in. Uh, I do have to say, okay, so we did not go to the meeting. We usually go like down to city hall and uh, you know participate. A lot of times we're just sitting in the back and observe, but we didn't because of the pandemic. And I actually screwed my back up a few days ago and I'm still like, anyway, but a grateful because again, there was like a lot of coughing. Larry always sounds like he's about to die. It was just like fine to be at home. But what was funny is, you know, Councillor Johnson does the welcome every you know week it rotates who gets to say opening remarks. It's Councillor Johnson's turn. And she said, happy new year. And then she also wanted to take a moment of silence for people that she lost and you know that everyone lost over the last year. And that was all fine and good. And then I like, I was getting my laptop set up or something and I look up and I'm like, oh my God, like did something happen? Like, did we lose the feed or like, did we get hacked? Cause it was like playing this God, I trust in you little like montage video thing. I'm just like, what the hell is this? And so I'm like screaming for Scott, like did, did something happen with the, cause you know, a drop signal and like weird shit happens with .com. Nope, that was her too many minute long Jesus song that I was like, I don't know. I was real shocked about that one. Anyway, that was how it opened up. It was exciting. And then they laid a bunch of shit over. Like that seemed kind of like the theme of Tuesday was layover, layover, layover. So um, the items that, I feel like this might not even be all of them, but the, the big ones were the Crossroads project um, because I guess there's some sort of a, okay, full disclosure, I don't know this person I'm about to let in. So if we get Zoom bombed, you've been warned. Just hope it's fine. Um, so the Crossroads project is, and maybe if anybody as usual knows any more about this, hop in and let us know. Um, but the uh, um, the Crossroads situation, I believe had to do with a water pipe situation um, between the Best Buy and Charleston's property, which is the west edge of the Crossroads project, I guess. And maybe Cindy, hop in, you live in that neck of the woods, but I think there was a water break because there wasn't an easement. The pipe was illegal. I don't. I don't really fully know, but something happened. Now there's a lawsuit. The, the, the two, the two developers on on the project, Lund Company, and and the other one, whichever it's the two letter word. AJ developer, Ventures or something. Uh, are suing one of them is suing the other one because, uh, they were notified of that this anyway. There was like a legal sewer capping, and. And so one company and their insurance company is suing the other development company. So there's bad blood now. And, and so the project's at a halt. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. I found it interesting, especially that they thought they'd just get it all resolved and it'll just be back on the 25th, which is the next meeting in two weeks. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I heard the Best Buy in Charleston's like flooded because of some pipe issues due to the crossroads. So it sounds nasty. They, yeah, they, the they flooded. The World Herald didn't want it. The World Herald what? The World Herald did an article on it. Okay, cool. I'll have to check that out. Um, so that is delayed. And then 38th Ave, the Gold Coast development where they're going to knock down those historic buildings that are not in, you know, underutilized or in falling down condition. We've already gone through this, but that got delayed as well because their numbers all changed. So uh, the project's going to be more expensive. I heard that either they're going to ask for more TIF, which <laughs> color me surprised on that one uh, or build fewer units so that one's laid over till march 1st um what else the library obviously we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute um the human rights and the civil rights board that combo meal <clears throat> got delayed again because i guess dr thompson was sick and the holidays so they weren't able to have the the type of public engagement that they needed um and well i guess there's also that the hud aspect. Dr. Thompson was supposed to be submitting a, a report soon. He's going to have egg on his face if he has to get it delayed, but he thinks it'll be okay. Um, so that did get laid over as well. And then um, the final layover was uh, a lot of conversation around a liquor license request for Walker's Convenient Mart on North 16th, I want to say. So, yeah. so those are all layovers. 
um so that's going to be jan basically january 25th so there's no meeting yeah. ne next week week after that it's going to be, be passed and they're going to vote and that's when they are going to vote on the bid north omaha bid so that also there was a lot of discussion about that um man and there was one person that said that he went came to the city oh, asked yeah. for an explanation of why am i getting this letter or or just an explanation about the bid or something the guy was like sure um give me your email and i'll get right back to you been 30 days has no response yeah and so these people the thing that pisses me off is brinker harding is like this is not the time matt Cousy is like this is not the time it's like these poor like no one understands what's going on and so like the city council instead of being informative i mean and Councilor johnson tried since it is it's her um district that it's the north 24th street bid i don't know if we even said that but um no one was into paying and or even knew what it was about, you know. And I, what I found really interesting about this, and jump in as always, please. Um, Harding was explaining that the North Twenty Fourth Street BID works a little bit differently than some other ones. Um, like I used to be on the Benson BID, and we had a budget, like an annual budget, because everybody just paid in if you were in the district. Um, North Twenty Fourth, if they want a project done. They have to pay for it and then they submit the bill to the city and get reimbursed which like to me is racist and like they aren't getting they're like basically not getting credit it sounds like like yeah they have to put the bill up front and then get reimbursed i don't like that i don't really know and maybe that's not you know as unusual as it sounds to me but it did sound like brinker harding was thinking that was um he made it sound like that was the only one that operates that way so just kind of interesting. And just going through, so it was Dundee, Benson, Elkhorn, North 24th Street, Blackstone. Blackstone. Um, and the North 24th Street had the biggest and the, the <clears throat> largest outstanding, of, yeah. outstanding debts. Um, I feel like Dundee had like two or three, uh, North 24th Street had two or three pages. Yeah. So it was just- like, Not huge amounts necessarily, sure. but like multiple people were affected, which to me shows that multiple people don't a, have the money also like let's just say hey red lighting that was a thing we understand that like we should actually just be not worrying about you paying for certain things although that's a whole other conversation but i mean there's just a lot of different ways it could have been handled and i just felt like it's kind of condescending the way that harding was handling and it was it. interesting also because uh the president of the north 24th street bid mm -hmm. uh lavanya goodwin was spoke earlier about the liquor license mm -hmm. um and so she was there and no. quite a few people where it would have been nice if she would have just stuck around another half hour and been like, I'm the president. I'm yeah, the and one it, who... it could have been a little bit more communication, but it kind of felt like, yeah, it was weird how long they it both those two of those things went on for it was over an hour for those two items. Um, but I think it's also important that we're, we're figuring stuff out. I mean, the public seems to be figuring stuff out slowly. That's, I'm, I'm grateful that there's been good turnouts. When people are confused about stuff, they're showing up. Because as we, again, we're talking about, they tried to figure it out, the city blew them off. And so they're like, okay, public hearing, I'll come to this, you know, at least try to get answers. So um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I guess that it also just kind of coincides with the, the BID billboard that was just purchased on North 24th. Did y'all see anything about that? I really should find this so I can screen share it with y'all because it is not yeah. great. Keep yeah, not safe. a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it safe, legal. Keep it respectful. I don't know. Just clean. Some, yeah. I'm going to try to find it here if I can. Uh, yeah, people are asking, where did this come from? That kind of aligns with a lot of the like op-eds that are in the paper. Um, is it Levant? She writes a lot of, she's a community columnist and she writes it about like keeping it clean. And... Um, yeah, Just so the entire thing looks incredibly patronizing. Yeah, and it's Ooh. gross. Here it is. Um, yeah. So yeah, keep it safe, legal, respectful, clean. North Twenty Fourth Street BID. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. Can we put one of those in Blackstone too? No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that's. I guess well, to me that was... compared it to Blackstone though, and Blackstone it was like Blackstone beautiful, and they're like, why couldn't you just do that? Like, yeah. a lot of other good ideas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just feel like that was not not great. And so that is the type of thing that the BID is, you know, that's what all the people that were there saying, what are where's our money going? That's where the money's going. The BID bought that billboard without community input. And then actually I heard was turning off comments when people were pushing back and saying, hey, we don't like this. You didn't ask us. It's our neighborhood. That's not what we wanted to say. So there you go. That's uh, some fun about the BID. Um, 
I guess, yeah, the library is obviously kind of the big thing that we continue to watch and try to engage and then feel like none of it matters. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we had plenty of time to. Although I think we all were a little bit surprised at Vinny Palermo. Yeah. He's, you know, what did he say at the end? Um, that we already have a library, folks, downtown. Yeah, we already have like, a, Listen up, folks. We already, we already have, have one. one. Yeah. It's already that paid we own. for. Yeah. 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 Because by the time you do the math, and like, I don't actually know what type of money it would take to renovate the Dale Clark, but they said it was too old but they're going to move it into another old building that also has to get redone that we don't own. It has no sidewalks Then yeah. libraries have to be ADA compatible. Yeah. Like, no sidewalks. Right. Totally bogus. And like it has, you know, crossing those brick streets, that's not easy for folks with mobility devices. Like there's just a lot of bad about 1401 Jones, um, not to mention the flipping shop co. Um, but I guess the main conversation that was happening on Tuesday was around the fact that it was premature to be voting on an owner's mm -hmm. representative when we don't even have either of the leases figured out. And I was uh, happy that Festerson pushed back a little bit and was like, you haven't given the council any briefings on this. Like, will you commit to giving the council some briefings on this? And Palermo, I think, was maybe the one, because actually I know Pete didn't go into the library meetings because I was at the one in our yeah. neighborhood. Um, but Palermo did, and he said that that was where he learned more than he's learned anywhere else. So I think that it's, as we know, it stinks. Um, I don't know what we can really do about it, except for like high five Vinny and say, yeah, keep pushing back because this does not make sense. You're right. It's too quick of a timeline. Why are we in such a rush? There's just like so many questions. Um, I think the timeline stuff is especially important because if you look at like those contracts, um, so they're saying like nine months, they're saying it's going to be ready to move in in October. But if you actually look at the lease for 1401 Jones, it says to start in November. And so their timelines don't even gotcha. line up. And it's a historical building, like um, historical, you know, preservation, mm -hmm. like status. Um, yeah. So there's also, you know, extra hoops that they have to jump through. Uh, we've got supply chain issues. I think it was, was it Ro who oh. actually brought up the supply chain issues? Yep. And I was like, yes, exactly. Like, there's you no know way you're getting this thing done in nine months. It's not right. happening. Right. Right. Which means, and you're, you know, making them shut down W. Dale Clark. So there's going to be months without library services downtown. Yep. 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 And it's like, okay, if you're committed to doing this, then yeah, city council, you should be asking these questions and getting the mayor and city finance to commit to something in the interim then like you know you got to have some sort of computer and internet access and you know yeah hold pickups or something yeah no it sounds like it's just going to be a total bust and it probably will be and she'll probably still get reelected. like this is the thing that right. blows right. my mind with omaha is like we just keep being like oh wow that was awful hopefully people pay attention she won't get reelected, and then it's like oh my god it's groundhog day like it just keeps happening um so I, I think it's important that they're asking questions and they like that that was a huge step like i said they showed a big backbone but like they're asking the wrong questions because or like and publicly it should be out there okay we understand we, like and they're trying to make like she said roe made the point that oh because of the supply chain issues these three weeks are critical we need these three weeks are gonna make a big difference yeah okay sure yeah. so what is what is actually behind the the the, the the time exactly the timeline the rush why do we have to be out of w dale clark at a certain time is it because of a undisclosed contract with another company that that they want to be in that location after the a certain after the demolition and they want to start building there is are those have those discussions already like and yeah, you know, like, 100 percent that's what it is because, but they won't publicly right, state right that. but exactly we need the questions need to be asked publicly so you know what i mean like up uh, you know yeah. and then yeah i mean because secondly they keep and then they this they mention like oh yeah it's not the orbit line and vinny's like oh i walked where i drove around downtown and i couldn't find another site well actually vinny the city of omaha owns another site downtown on the orbit line where is it? It's across the street from the current library. And so if you, if you truly think that it's out of date and we, that building is no good, well, that's fine. Next to the mall, there's right now it's a staging ground for the mall. It's not part of the mall. It's, there's a lot across the street and that is a perfectly suitable site to build a library. So if you could slow down the process, if you, there's intent on tearing that down and having a developer do it, you know, like, or I'm just saying like, that's a perfect site available. You know, and Vinny doesn't know that. 
my assumption is it's a, you know, it's another business headquarters and that they want it to be on both sides of that street. And that's why they have that staging mm-hmm. ground on the opposite side. Yep. Correct. Little, little Correct. Mark, if you will, like a, yeah. Yep. Place 100%. Yeah. I, it's, but yes, I, I really wish we would, we were seeing people publicly ask what is this rush and pointing like that is the main issue here mm-hmm. and secondly does everybody realize not only not only in charge of like like securing like you know like um or you know moving the the development and, and securing the developers and the built the architects but they're like in charge of the move is that accurate did i read that it yeah. said they choose the design team and the construction team and the relocation services i believe okay yeah, so they- all of it they yeah. will choose professionals. They were like, they were like, they, okay. I'm, they're not like, okay. Can we talk about what this urban core nonprofit BID, I don't understand what that is. And I know that there's like not all people on it, but like that feels weird if we don't have a contract with them. Like, yeah. is it the urban know. core Alliance thing you're talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I, I put down the BID. That was a snark. <clears throat> It's actually the Urban Core Alliance, and but it's a nonprofit, right? Like it's an organized. But yes, and yeah. I looked it up on the Nebraska Secretary of State's um, website, and it's uh, the business what it's going to be, do, be doing business as was not available. Yeah, Nadal is the president. Troy Anderson, who's the deputy chief of staff, is the vice president, I believe. And then Fisher from Lund Company is the secretary treasurer. Totally normal. That all sounds great. Nothing to worry about here. <laughs> Everything's fine. And when, yeah. when was it formed? Uh, September of 21. So Very important. If you If you look, if you just like this is a part of that. If you read, or if you listen to the last city council meeting, the people, uh, Republicans, Harding, but also Anderson from the, the, the mayor's deputy mentioned urban core. They just said urban core as like in their sentences became part of the vocabulary. They're inserting like, and it, like four or five mm-hmm. times. It's like, it's weird word talk. It, urban core is in their vocabulary now. And Those they can't get it. They turned into you know a nonprofit. Yeah. You know, Mark, Mark also, um, Somebody from Connect Go says Urban Core all the time as well. And I asked somebody else about it and they said, well, isn't the Urban Core part of the um, streetcar thing? But I think it's a little bit more than just the streetcar thing. Um, but they are using that, they're using that language constantly, just trying to kind of like, you know, it's just that repetitive thing. Um, I, Stephen I, Osberg uses it all the time. It, thank, yeah, thanks for following me on Twitter. You're one of my 11 followers. I'm actually a racist person, Sindona. So thank you very much. <laughs> appreciate Even though I appreciate the other rest of Benson on here, but I got to go, folks. Take care. Oh, get, on, get on that. Um, the, the continue the nonprofit because that's you know that's where it's at. But also the Urban Core Initiative, like the Connect Go Initiative, Jay Nile, that was something sponsored by the city, separate initiative. But it's very again, it's just like uh, mishmashing words because now they also have that separate nonprofit, which is not affiliated with. Or, exactly. Keep it. Keep following. Cool. Thank you. And we will ask questions about the timeline in the library too, because I think, yeah, good, good points. Oh, um, okay. Not to put you on the spot, Mary Jan, is that how I say your name? Welcome. I don't know. Have you been to council club before? Oh, no, this is my first time. Thank you for welcoming me. And yes, it is Mary Jan. Cool. Uh, I oftentimes get many different things than that. So kudos <laughs> to you for saying it right. <laughs> All right, cool. Are you interested in any particular item or are you just kind of a, a nerd like the rest of us following what's going on? <laughs> oh, this is my first time, as I mentioned, but I, my husband and I moved to Omaha at, at, on April Fool's Day at the beginning of the pandemic. So it oh, hasn't been God. very long, but that's quite a welcome to Omaha. <laughs> oh, it was a whole thing, actually. My son was in the hospital for 561 days in Omaha before that. And so really we lived here. We just didn't live here. Oh, um, wow. But uh, so now we've been here for almost two years and we've kind of gotten our feet under us that I'm just wanting to start getting more involved. I'm doing the you said traineeship at MMI and it was actually Melanie Davis who had recommended that I come to this meeting. So I am here. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Not to put you on the spot, but I'm like, who are you? And I actually saw you and Mel registered maybe kind of around the same time. And so 
cool well mm -hmm. thank you for coming um all right for letting Sorry, me like, join and listen in yeah totally we i mean we do record this but sometimes i'm like are you a spy from the mayor's office um <laughs> anyway now we know who you are <laughs> i'm mostly kidding but also she does kind of hate us anyway uh welcome so yeah we just uh talk about agenda stuff um what part of town are does any of this impact you this doesn't just need so to be we're all at 156 in Q. so we're not downtown and yeah. But I, I mean, I still like to know about what's going on for yeah, sure. Totally. And actually, you're rich, supposed right? to be getting a library before the downtown library is supposed to be moved. So that's a fun Millard fact for you. But um, cool. I will I will allow you off the hot seat. Thanks for humoring me. Thanks for coming. Uh, all right. What else were we? Th I guess anything else library wise? I feel like we've got some knowledgeable folks on here about those types of things on the record heck no <laughs> fair fair okay we can we can hit stop soon ish um i feel like i was gonna say something else well before we stop um i thought it was so last week we had eric williams from the papio oh, yeah. nrd give a nice presentation he actually talked longer at council club than he did at actual city council because yeah. he had a, his his item was second to last yeah it was like a three or four hour meeting mm -hmm. He said he had his N95 on, super tight, yeah. and uh, and by the time he got up there, he was just like, "I made this whole presentation, and uh, yeah, he's like, it's gonna be cool." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like, like you know, Demond. He was so tired of being there. He was texting me, but it was actually um one thing that Sarah made the connection. And I think that we made the connection last week was that um when Eric Williams talked is that that is the park. That council member Rowe and his wife Marcy, who Sarah went on a bike ride with, that is their park that they use to access the trail system. And so we made that connection with Eric Williams and Don Rowe. And sure enough, Don Rowe was just like, that's my park. He's like, he was so excited. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I get my own. Like, I feel like we should call that, you know, Don Rowe trail extension or, you know, just get him. <laughs> like, it's really would be Marcy Rowe because he doesn't really ride, but Marcy does. That was, that was, there you go, moment. Marcy Rowe. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. Um, yeah, that was, Oh, that was a long meeting. And he did. He sat there from the very beginning. He's like, he texted me. He's like, I'm four minutes late. Did they move mine to the front of the agenda? I was like, oh, sweetheart. No, you're going to be there for a while. And yeah, hours. And there were, um, there was anti-mask protesters outside. Um, mm -hmm. And then we saw a, a few of them that came inside just on the live feed. Um, they brought their children like they have in the past. And, but since there was no mask, anything mask related on the agenda, um they left after they, they left. realized yeah, yeah. which is interesting because if they they never show up we watched you we watched the douglas county uh commissioners meeting dr hughes is usually on around 10 10 o'clock in the morning on at tuesday you never see i should say never i have not seen any amount of the anti-maskers like that's what they should be council. yeah yeah i feel like larry needs to let them know like yeah. hey you guys need to come at 10 <laughs> yeah um, too late yeah, it was uh that was some interesting call in. Oh, okay. Actually, thank you for saying something, Destiny, because this reminds me that I wanted to ask you something about a city of Omaha proposed contract. Destiny's our local labor uh person that you need rep. Yeah, yeah, you need rep. Thank you. <laughs> Words. Um, so apparently the city of Omaha proposed some terrible contract that got voted down like 200 and something to 15 or whatever. Um but they're attempting to penalize you for sick days. And it's like a global pandemic. And I feel like sick days should not be penalized. Oh, they've um, done that for a long time, haven't they? I heard that this was a change that was really upsetting to a lot of folks. I have a friend who works within the machine who like feeds me stuff once in a while. And they were like, this is terrible. And I'm kind of afraid that they're going to try to do this at all parts. And the it was right before the snow ice freezing fog situation I don't know, a couple weekends ago and um and it was like under two inches so the contractors weren't going to be called in so it was all on like the public works like the city yeah. staff and the city staff was so pissed they were a lot of people were worried that they were just gonna like none of them were gonna show up um and the person who was messaging me was like do not go out this weekend the roads are gonna be terrible because the public works department staff is pissed and um yeah so i just didn't know if you'd heard anything about that destiny uh, no, not a whole lot from that. Um, I've tried to keep my ears open to it, but, uh, it just did not happen yet for me. 
uh, unfortunately. No problem. I think that contract's public. I feel like should- yeah, the contract yeah. is public. That yeah, I would not have time to read it. Yeah. I no. saw that there was stuff on the agenda um, that I just did not have time. Yeah. No. So Local 251 is yes. um, the like city clerk um, union, and there is something like that already in place. Huh. Um, it's something like, uh, you can't quote me on this because I'll get it wrong, but it's something like 5% you get, if it's like 5% of your total work time you used in sick time, you get like a verbal warning. Hmm. If you hit 8%, you get like a, a written counseling form or something. So written documentation. Hmm. And I think it's 10% is when you hit, you go to like the tribunal, like the sick time tribunal thing for that. It's probably not called a tribunal, but that's a yeah. committee. I don't know what it is, um, but something like that. And they like look at your case or whatever. And I don't know what they do or decide. Interesting. Um, okay, so I guess the city wants to implement a sick leave point system for these employees. Oh. So I don't know if that's different. I, I mean, I'm, yeah. Yeah, that sounds different then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, rumor has it that because of last year during the winter snows, employees kept calling in sick on the weekends. Whether <laughs> sick, no one knows. That's not the point. Now everyone gets penalized. So, and why any sane person would encourage employees to come to work when they're sick during the winter and a pandemic. So anyway, she said that a lot of folks were upset about it. And I just didn't, I just want to share that in case anybody, oh, what is Jessica Ibsen about it? So it sounds like they're either making this harsher or just implementing a version of it with more unions. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Um, Let's see. Oh, communication about the project. Is that what you just put in there? Yes. Thanks, David. Um, If approved by the library board and the city council this will be the home of the library yeah i think that what another thing that was funny with vinnie palermo last tuesday was how i think he almost slipped and said pile of shit when he was describing the, <laughs> the 1401 jones building i was like oh we heard it well you didn't have to say it. we all know uh, but yeah it is rough um i will screen share just in case uh not everybody knows what glorious building is about to become the new library home for the downtown spot um and then i guess so yeah i <laughs> sidewalks uh not so much just looks so much history real rough yes in the huddle it. office and like how much water came into the huddle office and like just water all the time coming in and it was cold and just not i feel like it's not a good place yeah. for people library people yeah Oh, and speaking of flooding, isn't the Shopco in a floodplain where they're going to store all the archival materials and like? But I mean, they're going to store those collections there and then maybe open them up to the public once a week or something. Like that's the most used part of the library, and they're going to move it to a Shopco that's maybe open once a week. I mean, add it to the list of stuff that mm-hmm. stinks. I know. I just can't believe that there are this many obvious errors and issues and like really sort of just shady shit and no one not no one's saying anything a lot of us are reaching out and saying this does not make sense help us understand and now they're like oh we have to hurry up and hire these folks so we can do public engagement it's like why when you don't even listen to the public engagement that you've been receiving for the last years like how are we to find any sort of i don't understand why the library board is like quiet on like why is the board I mean I guess I know the answer I know why right. but like, appointed by the mayor right that's right. the answer that I'm thinking of yeah are you thinking of a different answer yeah <laughs> okay yeah but it's just like they just are so I don't know they're figureheads I guess but they're interested in keeping their appointment right and not rocking the boat but they're going to when they're floating down the Keystone Creek <sighs> It's upsetting. I don't know. It's it's hard to like make sense of a lot of this stuff. But again, the goal here is for us to all kind of just keep an eye on it and continue to like poke our elected officials and at least yep. let them know that we know and ask questions and demand answers and hope for the best and pat Vinny on the head when he yells at the mayor's office rep. I don't know. Ugh. Yeah, try to get people to come to the public hearing. The one that's coming up on the 25th about the leases. Yeah. In the, yeah. Because so that's, um, I guess that was part of the, I, maybe we already talked about this a little bit, but the impetus of moving it is so that 
both leases and the nautil agreement will all be on the same timeline schedule then yeah. um but yeah that's gonna be that'll be an interesting one i mean is there any anything that we haven't already discussed whether tonight or another council club episode where trying to think of a new way to get them to pay attention or care or like is there any kind of a linchpin that we're missing i don't know seems I was just, I started to count votes in my mind. I feel like the Republicans, unfortunately, Republicans and Democrats, we kind of know that five, six, and seven are going to support the mayor. West Omaha is going to support West Omaha. Um, and then only, I mean, the only one that I can even consider would be Palermo. So we have one. Well, I think that. Can we get all the other four? I kind of think Denver, it's East possible. Omaha, to not vote to move the downtown library. I feel like it's already a done deal. Man, it is already. I feel a like Festerson, more often than not, will kind of split the will be the decider, the three, he, the tiebreaker. He's like smiley. He's like, oh, I almost might ask a question, but then a lot of times he's just like, okay, yeah, it'll happen anyway. Yeah. So I don't know. He, I don't have a lot of hope, but I don't know. It could, it could go either way. If he again, we'll all just turn up the heat and we'll all just continue to email folks that are on the council and hope that. Yeah, public shaming. I sometimes. think one pot or one sort of silver lining, if there really could be one, would be continued engagement and getting getting Palermo and anyone at the city council to talk about it, get it on the news, and to make the to put the pressure on the mayor so that she does not get reelected or she doesn't run on this great new library in four years. Um, yeah. So that would be the one positive that this doesn't look good for. The administration that is pushing the hardest for this and hopefully um, millard comes out and says what about our library like if i lived in millard i would be so mad like the millard library is and i have pros here so correct me if i'm wrong but isn't that the like highest volume like the most service and yeah. the small and yeah. like so under the state. yeah yeah bonkers and so yeah so all right turn out millard let don Rowe and whoever know that yeah we need uh to get real about the public input that we've already had for so long. That's the part that's like super upsetting to me. It's insulting at a point. Like, don't ask us for your input. Don't ask us for our input because you did and we showed up and now you don't care. Mary Jane, what's up? I just have a quick question and I apologize because I don't, don't know and I am not as informed as I would like to be. But are we, have we moved past the privatization conversation? <laughs> like, for, it's not a silly question at all. First rule of council club, no such thing as a silly question. So you're all good. And also that is kind of like, feels like it's still sort of wrapped in all of this, right? Because I feel, mm -hmm. and we've got, again, some, some, you know, Intel folks here, but it just seems like it all stinks. And I don't know. I mean, of course, like for me, I, I know when there was like the FOIAs and the open record requests came back, there was a lot of like code names for these library projects and i'm like if this is all cool and everything's on the up and up you don't need code names like it's so silly um and then gene stothert flat out said that was never a conversation it's like oh weird because we have emails that directly prove you wrong but you lie yeah, out of your for face two years that, that you yeah. were doing this planning this for two years and there was an article in the paper in february of 2020 about how private donors were going to start funding the library and we all missed it because that's when the pandemic started. Yeah. yeah and why, would, why would Heritage be meeting with the library staff? And I didn't say that, but I know it happened tonight. <laughs> We're recording though right now. <laughs> but anyway, no one watches this. But I think but, there are separate issues. Moving or relocating the downtown library and then Heritage Services, I think, are separate issues. It is interesting whether how, how are they going to overlap? I haven't heard much of. Well, because here's what they overlap. <laughs> My, oh, my completely. Thought, is it a full circle though or just a one of the reasons i'm a little bit like <laughs> hesitant to push back so much on the like keep it by the orbit line is because then they're going to put it at 72nd and dodge and be like oh people said they wanted it on the orbit line after they ignore all the rest of the shit that we've all been asking for but um yeah no it's all it's all part of the same twisted situation it's not it's not cool yeah mary jan if you have time to stick around we can chat yeah, once we hit stop on the record, we'll just dive in a little bit further. Um, I feel like there was some, oh. But, I mean, I, if they move downtown, that smaller downtown location is not the main library, right? Like the, that, that is, is a, a branch, branch location. That's just the downtown so they branch. still need to rebuild a main branch, which would be the heritage plan. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 
apparently Stothar just took a plane out of here today. Um, so I think that like the mask mandate stuff is got her uh, <laughs> ruffled. And so she's heading to Annapolis. Uh, someone was on the plane who I'm friends with on Instagram was like, oh my gosh, me and Jean sitting behind me. And I was like, okay, where are you going? What's happening? <laughs> um, so yeah, because, so the state AG decided to uh, sue Stothert as well as Dr. Hughes and like the whole lot of them. So I think she's just like, I gotta go. Somewhere. I did not see that part. How did I miss that? Yeah. And uh, Schmatter and the sheriff and city council city ca- like a whole laundry list so they're just going for it Rickets. let's just waste a bunch of money yeah and a bunch exactly. of time for and then also let's build a giant lake speaking of wasted money don't worry about all the homeless people or the oh i started people. going off on that i was oh, if we want to invest in something that's like good for water instead of just talking about moving water let's talk about like saving our aquifers and like invest those millions in the technology that already exists yeah. to put in sensors on all of these farmers fields so they can use 30 percent of the water and have the exact same quality <sighs> crop yield like it's so easy it's so easy but this we're gonna is- build a giant lake instead at least we're not gonna flow to ashland with this plan i'm just like are you <laughs> serious like that's that's what you're gonna okay okay cool it's okay. rough here wait here, is man. It, it's rough is here this lake, is this lake going to be around here or is this having to do with we're going to take um water from colorado yeah did you hear yep, Colorado's man. governor is like um what are you going to do now because none of that makes sense from what we understand and i'm like yes welcome to nebraska nothing makes sense here we're going to build a lake with your water i don't know that's some weird power moves yeah. between colorado and nebraska i don't know it's weird they're saying we're going to take all that colorado water and put it in a giant lake between lincoln and omaha yeah yeah a okay. lake that's bigger than okaboji i think that was was yeah. that in the paper that yeah. Said yeah. That? yeah wild not necessary but the think water about right tourism though. money folks oh. the water rights are so big yeah, yeah. <laughs> nebraskans want to swim uh, ridiculous <laughs> and so it's just like you have to laugh or you cry i do both uh i recommend it balance right <sighs> okay anything else on the record well no I, I think someone in the chat just brought up that so the snowstorm is tomorrow mm, oh, oh but yeah. it starts friday into saturday but we know that Jean does not go into the office on the weekends well and she's in annapolis <laughs> i'm just i'm just worried about another like historic hundred year storm our third hundred year storm with the of past the year. year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they always happen on the weekends. Yeah. If they happen on the weekends, it's like everyone basically martial, martial law until yeah, yeah. So everyone get prepared uh, for a mayorless uh, weekend. Yeah. And stay safe yeah. out there. Yeah. Party time. Excellent. <laughs> Good luck to us all. The flooding this summer definitely felt like fend for yourself. Nothing will be working ever again. Yeah. It ha- I know they both of the both the storms this summer were both on at Saturday. I think one was like Friday night into Saturday morning. Yep, the windstorm. And then the second one was like, oh my god, a Saturday again! Like she just ignores shit if it happens on the yeah, weekends. It's she- like alternate reality stuff. It's very difficult. Yeah. So here we go, another weekend storm. Yeah, Mother Nature. Good luck. Next time you. it'll happen during office hours. Nine to five. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, cross your fingers. Right, Mother Nature, and ask her to make sure she dials up a Tuesday on a Wednesday, not Tuesday, ideally, because I don't like it when Stothard does press conferences while we're at City Hall. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Okay, uh, don't go to City Council on the 18th, wait till the 25th, and then bring your freery about libraries and whatnot. Um, does anybody else have anything else to say before I hit stop on the recording and then we can chat amongst ourselves? And so, just the, there will be uh, an agenda next Thursday. Mm-hmm. So, um, we will meet. For council yeah. club and so we'll do one more of these before the 25th but yeah correct yes I, i'm gonna i'll just throw something in there that's a little bit more on the positive side um at the, Mo- <laughs> at the mocha walkability uh meeting last night um a group of people are going to get together and try to meet with the um uh developers for the 39th and dodge project and then also the 38th um um, and uh, projects um, to try to um, get them to understand, just kind of like we did with land, um, uh, the Crossroads people, yeah, because um, they really didn't know right. some of the stuff we brought to the table. Right. And um, so I think it's really a positive step to really get those developers in a conversation and say, hey, you know, this is really something that we really would like to see. 
Yeah. You know, because right now it's like they're kind of being left out and everybody else is kind of complaining about it. But if we bring them in, unless somebody already has that I don't know about. Um, so I, I really feel like that might be a positive step. Awesome. No, that's good. Uh, I had a lot of, I had an appointment last night uh, from my back. I got a lot of emails leading up to it with new folks that were going to be there. So it sounded like it was a great meeting and I got the recap. So that's awesome. I'm excited. I am going to follow up with Jay Lund um, of Blackstone everything uh, as well. And so between, you know, those other folks and then, um, oh, Dewan's here. We're about to close it down. But yeah, hopefully that will be some productive conversation. Um, you know, don't know till you try, I suppose. So that's good. Cool. Anything else before we hit stop? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to. Another yeah. Right. Okay. More Everyone's folks are done. jumping in for the good stuff at the end. <laughs> If you're just joining us, hang on, because we're about to hit stop on the recording, and then we are going to talk amongst ourselves. So, uh, all right, Council Clovers, we will see you on the 20th.